this video, I'm going to show you how I use these parts to build a portable 12 volt bike wash that's powered by a standard car battery. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to build a DIY bike wash made entirely from parts that I picked up online, which is powered by a regular car or van battery. I've put links to all of the parts that I've used in the description below, so you can have a go at building one too, if you like. Before we do that though, this channel's all about mountain biking, so if you are too, please consider subscribing. If you do, don't forget to click the bell icon, and you'll be one of the first to know about new Meant for Descent videos. Now, let's start with a quick look at the parts that I used. First up is the power lead. I used a 5 meter automotive extension lead with a plug at one end and a socket at the other. It's rated to 12 volts and has a 5 amp radio fuse concealed inside the plug. If you want to run your bike wash directly from a 12 volt battery and not just your car's electrical outlet, you'll need some crocodile clips to make an adapter. To turn the power on and off, I chose a double pole inline rocker switch. The pump is a bit of an extravagance. This one is a VIP Plus which is made by Comet. It's a submersible pump and units like this are usually found in caravans and motorhomes. I chose this particular one because it has a flow rate of 20 litres a minute. If you're on a budget, you can pick up a similar pump for half the price, but expect a flow rate of around only 10 litres a minute. This part is an optional extra. It's a vented non-return valve, also made by Comet, which will prevent any water in the hose flowing back through the pump after it's been turned off. I'm expecting it to reduce the flow rate a little, but I think it's a worthwhile addition to the system. The hose is pretty straightforward. It's a clear, braided PVC hose with an internal diameter of 10mm, which is a little over 3 eighths of an inch. The section that I'm using is 4 meters long. At the end of the hose is a quick connector. This one is made by an Italian company called Kleber and it is a bit pricey, but the quality is good. There are definitely cheaper alternatives available, but I haven't seen any that are as well made as this one. Needless to say, this one fits a hose with a 10mm internal diameter. This is a hose lock nozzle, and it fits snugly into the Kleber Quick Connector. It's basic, but it lets you adjust the flow of water from a wide cone to a narrow jet. It can also be closed completely, so you don't have any leaks when you're transporting your bike wash. In addition to all this, I bought some hose clips, but I bought them before I intended to use the non-return valve, so I don't know if I'll need them or not. I also bought some zip ties to keep the power cable out of the way. For the reservoir, I'm using a 25 litre plastic jerry can. On paper, the pump should empty this in around a minute and a quarter, which doesn't seem long at all, but I'm sure that adding the valve, connector and nozzle will increase that. Stick around until the end of the video to see how it performs. Now, on to assembly. The socket is going to be used to make an adapter that will clip directly to a car or van battery. I used the ruler on my combination square to measure out roughly 300mm of cable, and I made a cut. I then made another cut between the two wires and I split them apart. Next, I stripped about 30mm of insulation from the end of each wire before twisting the strands together. This wire has a black line on it, which means that it's live. I inserted the bare wire beneath the tab of the crocodile clip and folded it back on itself, but I made sure to place the insulating sleeve from the clip onto the wire first though. The small metal flags at the rear of the clip can then be folded down to secure the wire in place. I repeated the process with the other clip before soldering each one. Because I was working at my desk, I chose to use a plate to protect the work surface from heat damage. When the clips are cooled, I slid the insulating sleeves back into place. I used a number one Phillips driver to open the switch and then to remove the cable clamps and loosen all four of the terminals. I chose to connect the power cable first and laying it in position allowed me to see where the wires needed to be cut.
When I was happy with the length, I removed about 5mm of insulation from each wire and inserted them into the appropriate terminals. The terminals in this switch are marked. One side has a letter N, which stands for neutral, and the other side has a letter L, which stands for line. The negative cable is attached to the neutral terminal and the positive cable to the line. When both wires were securely held by the terminals, I replaced the cable clamp and tightened it down. I then did the same with the pump. With this cable, however, the brown is the line and the blue is the neutral. With the switch reassembled, it's now time to place the pump to one side and start work on the hose. First, I slid a hose clamp onto the hose, then fitted the non-return valve and then tightened the clamp with a number 2 Phillips driver. The valve can then be pushed onto the pump. It's a taper fit, so no fixings are needed. I used cable ties to bind the electrical cable to the hose. I began at the pump and I stopped just beyond the switch. The quick connector is in two parts. I unscrewed the collar and pushed it under the hose. I then reassembled the connector, making sure that it was screwed tightly together. Finally, I click the nozzle into the connector and it's done. But, does it work? Of course it works. Who in their right mind would spend this much time showing you how to make a bike wash that could have worked but didn't? It's not bad either. Flat out, the pump will run for over three minutes before drawing air, which is more than enough to wash a bike if you adhere to the military shower principle. It's low pressure, so it's going to be kinder than a jet wash. I won't have to wait in queues at trail centres anymore or carry bags of coins around to be able to use theirs, and it's going to be really useful when I go places that just don't have bike washes. If you've enjoyed this project, think it might be useful, or if you've done something similar, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. If you do, don't forget to click the bell icon so you can be one of the first to know about new videos when they're released. If you've enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please also give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.